Hello YouTube, welcome back to another episode of the Pokemon Legends Arceus All Lords Beginner Tutorial. Uh, today, I'm actually doing this live on my Twitch channel, so if you want to follow me and see me do more content like this and actually play the game sometimes, uh, the link will be in the description for to follow me on Twitch. That's where I'm, that's where I am 90% of the time. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> true, so true. Also, the, every episode from Cobalt Onward is going to have corrupted audio, unfortunately. Not really anything I can do about that. Okay, how long do I wait on this fucking screen? 30 seconds? Dude, I was stalling. I had, I had some announcement planned. Alright, so this is right after um, you've gone up to the professor, however many times they ask you to. And uh, I've met Melly, and then we came back down to the lobby. Then they said, and then Adamant's like, "I'll battle, I'll battle you, and you know, show you that, show Melly that you're not terrible." So um, before you do that, you want to go to the training grounds first. Hi, Shady. Um, we're not actually going to do anything at the training grounds. It's just the fastest way to get to this guy. Uh, we're gonna buy some more materials from him. You want to have basically enough to make like 40 black tumble stones, which if you're catching too many things shouldn't be an issue. Also remember you can press ZR to get to uh, the selling part of, uh, of transacting. Uh, and then I guess like 10 or 11 or so um, pot pods and caster friends. And then you can craft them all right here. Craft max lead and walls, uh, max scatterings, and max great balls because you have nothing else to use for that. All right. Then we're going to go fight Adamant. Uh, Shady, I was recording a run of uh, this route, just a straight run, straight all lords, and I got T padded. <laughs> Not this, but like last night I was doing just an offline all lords run with the route that I'm proposing. And yeah, so when I say getting tea padded, I'm referring to this leaf beyond very, very extremely rarely using calm mind instead of leaf blade. It is unbelievably rare, um, but it can happen. And it's like a 10 second time loss. All right, so that's the battle's over. Uh, all right, I forgot I skipped cutscenes. All right, so now we're told to go to the training grounds and meet Ingo. We met Ingo, go back to the front gate and go to Cornet. And then from here, um, if there's anything you had left to evolve that you've not evolved yet, uh, you should definitely do so. Uh, personally, in this run, I did not evolve one of my one of my spheels. I think that was it. Oh, yeah, I think that was it. I'm looking around like there's something else. Oh, yeah, I'm bringing a third GD just in case. Um, because in this run, I did not have two heavy G dudes uh, that I evolved in Graveler. So there's a lot of ores in Cor in Corner Highlands that are going to become you know they're going to show you Graveler so you can get that done. But if you want to be safe, you should bring a third Geodude to evolve, because alternatively, you can just evolve three Geodudes and finish both Geodude and Graveler. Anyways, yeah, I've already crafted. I don't know why I'm here. Crafting a revive, I guess. Yep. All right. And you're going to set it to evening. It's very important because um, this is going to allow you to finish Yanma. Over here, right by the base. Nice fog. Okay. So with uh, Yanma and Yan Mega, uh, there's always going to be a Yanma right here, a Yanma somewhere around here, and a Yan Mega right here. They're never going to be, you know, different encounters. Um, ideally, you'd get one Yan Mega in your party, but it doesn't really matter that much unless you're like, I don't know. Unless you're picky about doing the same thing exactly every single time. So I usually go for Yanma, Yanma, Yanma. I did get the Yanma, that's good. Um, but we need two Yanma's to finish it. 
And then um, I, I remember this. I briefly looked over there um, just to show it. Right here, there's another Yen Mega. You can just swim in the water and then jump up here and grab this one if that one broke out and you're, you're hell-bent on getting Yen Mega. What did you want me to do? The, the fog just happened, dude. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, so basically all of the ores um, before the Wayward Cave entrance that you can see will be Graveler. So that includes this one and the one by the start. <laughs> What's up, Kyra? Um, so yeah, once you go through Wayward Cave, uh, there's not going to be a while before uh, you can see another Graveler ore. All right, wherever cave is boring, just follow Ingo. And then just get through here as fast as possible. Sorry, I should show the exiting of that. Uh, you can catch this G dude for like 60 points. It's not 60 points up front, it's like 40. But then defeating it with a rock type move later will give you an additional 20 um, because it is currently technically daytime. I just kind of went by it because I already aggroed it and I didn't feel like stopping and stunning it or something. Yeah, certainly something you can do. If you get two Zubats in this cave, if you catch both of them and evolve one later, Zubat is done. All right, so now we're through here. I'm just looking for more Parises, because I think I still need one. I don't have very many stun items, I'm realizing, so I'm going to have to part ways with my mud balls, unfortunately. So um, I think that's Golduck done. I think I already caught one, maybe. Hmm. Well, I didn't catch that one, that's for sure. Yeah, you want to be leading Gastron on here? And then, uh, okay, I want to end up evolving my Sfeel now. Doesn't really matter when, though. Okay, so it's fogging. This is not going to be very easy. Uh, fog cuts your accuracy by a disgusting amount. Uh, that Shaking Ore right here is not Graveler. Do not be confused. This is a Bronze Ore Ore. Not going to help you. All right, that's a range to get the one shot. Um, if you don't get the one shot, that's fine. Just go for it again. I guess switch to something else if you die. I don't know what to do. It's not It's not a big deal. You're not in any danger of losing the fight, especially if you have a full party of six Pokemon. You're not in any danger of losing. It just can be a little bit slow. Let's follow the cutscenes. You can grab these apricorns if you need them. If you're out of balls mid area, you can craft more stuff. Um, you shouldn't need to grab any more ores or apricorns or anything like that, but certainly nothing wrong with trying to grab stuff like that just in case things go wrong. I mean, I, I'd find it very difficult to burn 40 uh, bleeding balls. That's just me. Okay, so I've stealth sprayed, and now I need to scare, I think, two earth strings because I evolved my two teddy earths. Yeah, I'm just going to scare these ones. Like I said in the last video, the range on the scatterbang is very big, so you don't have to be too picky with it. All right, now we're going to fight Ingo. Make sure you're leading a Yanma here. And God save my soul. All right, thank God I hit. <laughs> Uh, I think it's like 66% accuracy in fog, if I'm not mistaken. And nobody's missing, which is the weird thing. It's like the fog isn't even there. And then, yeah, you didn't get the boost, thank God. If he gets the boost in fog, pack it up. <laughs> Just pack it up. I'm going to go for another strong air slash and I missed. I'm going for strong 
Actually, that doesn't actually matter that much because um, when it was my turn here, God, please let me. I'm when it's my turn here. You see how I'm going twice, and I'm forfeiting that twice by going strong. When I miss, it doesn't give me that penalty because it only applies that penalty to my action speed if I hit the move. So because I missed, I got the, I got a second chance to go. It acts as if I never chose strong. Yeah, fog is a little bit of a nuisance, but it's fine. But luckily, Gligar has aerial ace, which cannot miss in fog. Or can never miss at all in general. I guess quick attack can't either, Jesus. But you know what else can't miss in fog? Water pulse. So you can go for strong water pulse here. Uh, see what it'll do. It's not a great range to kill. And then the fog disappears as soon as I do that, of course. I think I actually lose Gastrod on here. Yeah, then I just finish it up with um, Yen Mega. If you're trying to finish Yen Mega, um, you'll need to see it use a strong move and ancient power and catch two unspotted. So this is my strong move. I would have actually gone Yen Mega if it wasn't fogging. Um, because Gliscor dies to a air slash into strong air slash combo. But it worked out. I mean, Sneasler. Okay, then we're going to climb up here. Uh, maybe wondering why. Um, Gligar is up here, and Gligar is a very, very simple, actually, um, Pokemon to uh, finish research on. I'm evolving... Uh, where's my cursor? I'm, evol I'm, I'm reviving Gastron there um, because I want Gastron to get this experience. It's very, very important. Uh, the Gastron is near 40 or at 40 by the time you leave this area for the next area. Yeah, these guys just kind of turn on a dime, so you gotta be careful. <clears throat> so the idea here for Gligar is catch four, all unspotted. Where am I going? Oh, I heard the shiny. <laughs> there was, I got a shiny. I was trying to find it. I heard the shiny sound effect. Yeah, I thought it was down there. I was like, uh, what, what's shiny? I heard it, but I don't see. Sh I hear shiny, but I don't see shiny. I will unfortunately go back for it later. That was just a skill issue. Yeah, you want to kind of look at the bottom um, <clears throat> while you're doing this. I recommend. Hey, what's up, Kenny? I recommend looking at the bottom left corner and making a note of the gender that you're looking at. And it helps me actually say it out loud. So if you watch some of my old VODs, my old runs, um, while I'm catching Gligars, I'll say male or female out loud because you need to have one of each. You need to have both male and female, um, but you also need to have four unspotted. So it just helps me keep track if I've seen one or the other. Yeah, that one was not unspotted. If you have trouble with Gligar, it's perfectly fine. You can opt to skip it. Um, like I said in the last video, there's a lot of research in this run, and there's plenty that you can just ditch and skip. All right, so now I'm going to go find the shiny. I don't know what was shiny. It's this haunter right here. I just wanted it. I don't know why. All right, there we go. So now uh, we're going to warp back to our camp. And um, just as a measure, just in case, um, you know, something in that area gave you trouble, 
if you're having trouble getting all that done very quickly. Um, we're going to reset evening. Um, just so you have a little bit more nighttime to work with for a lot of these tasks. If you can manage to get all your points you need without doing this, that's fine. Um, but I want to introduce this as an option for people that may be struggling with it. Make sure you do some inventory management if you want to, in case like you know you're looking for spoiled apricorn still. I know I'm starving. <laughs> I am starving on spoiled apricorns. Rip distortion timer. I, it's funny you say that, Athena. I got two distortions yesterday in Coronet, or one one in Cobalt, one in Coronet during my uh, recorded run of this route. Both were after sleeping. I'll let this play out. Okay. So after you've followed my climbing, um, if you head up this wall right here, there's this is where the Toxicroaks are. Toxicroaks, Toxicroak can be a little bit of a menace. Um, it's not too hard to... Um, I'm going to go and evolve my Geodude now because I haven't seen any Graveler Ores. I'm just giving up. I'm lazy. Toxicroak by itself is not that hard of a problem to get the research on to get the scares. The hard part is its catch rate and catching it. You need to scare three Toxicroaks and then catch one. And that last part is by far the most difficult. And with a stealth spray up, they can't hear you. You can, you know, I only need to scare one more, but every scare you do is 20 points. So if I'm going to throw a Scatterbang down to scare one anyway, I might as well scare two more for 40 extra points. It goes up to five. All right, that one saw me. That's fine. I just need to get one. So this is a technique called uh, stun locking. That's what we call it. Um, basically, if you see a big shake like that, you know, the shake where it's obvious that you haven't caught it. This shake, you know, it does a low bounce if you catch it, but if it does this, it's failed the first check and it can break out. You can kind of, in preparation for it breaking out, toss a ball so that it connects with it as it's breaking out, like that. It takes some practice, but it's very, very useful in this uh, in runs like this. Otherwise, you can just run around and catch a different one. It's not super required. So I was coming over here to catch more Hippopotas because I fumbled them earlier. All right, we're good. And now it's fine that I did all that because I was stalling for night anyway. Um, because the Clefairies and Clefable or the Clef Fairies and Clefas over here don't spawn until night. So. Yeah, you can do Skun Tank, but it's not necessary in this route. Or at least for all lords, it's not. Okay, so for Clefairy and Clefa, wh whichever one you're going for, you should need one of them. You can do both if you have time, but um, yeah. Uh, I just throw a berry, make sure you're still sprayed, throw a berry, move on, throw a berry, move on, throw a berry, and just kind of circle back to the first one so you can watch it eat, because if things go far enough off screen, they stop being updated by the game. Um, so it's very, very important to, you know, check up on those Pokemon and make sure they're still loaded in. Their, their positions are still being updated because like if you're far enough off screen the pokemon still technically exists but it's not moving towards the berry because the game doesn't consider that important to keep track of and you should need to feed three and catch one unspotted for safety you can catch four though or for safety you can feed four if you you know not sure about getting one unspotted and then there's a free unknown here 20 points unknown will always get in the ball And I saw Cleffa, so I figured I'd go over here and catch it for 30 points. If it gets in unspotted, that's 30. Or feeding, it's 50, actually. Feed, catch, unspotted is 50 points. Pretty good. No, no, feed, catch, unspotted at night is 60 points, actually. 
Yeah, because there's a modifier for catching it at night for some reason, like it's going to appear at any other time. Is there a modifier for being caught at night? Oh no, maybe that was just... I don't know what I'm thinking of then. Hmm. Oh yeah, it does have a modifier for being caught at night. Like, how else are you supposed to get Cleffa? Okay, so you'll want to catch one of these Sneasels. If they see you like this and they don't perk up, there's a chance they're glitched. Um, if you target them and there's an X, don't worry about it. Just don't go for it. Um, but I have Sticky Globs, and I have nothing else I really need to stun for the remainder of the area. It would have been actually impressive if that Sneasel broke out of that ball. Alright, that's all I really care for doing with Sneasel. Now I have options to choose from. Although it doesn't matter too much um, how good the Sneasel you end up going with is. I'm going to go ahead and throw a ball at that Voltorb while I'm heading over here to Mistrevis. Good, that's my caught Voltorb. Now I'm going to use my last Stealth Spray. I got a Razor Claw on the mount. I got a Razor Claw here in this video, and then in the run I did last night of this full route, I also got a Razor Claw. That's not true, Athena. Uh, they show up in caves at, at, at during the daytime in uh, Coronet. In Wayward Cave, they're there. So Mischievous is just catch three with two of them being unspotted. At night, obviously. Um, if you're stealth sprayed, you should have a good chance of catching them if you just run behind them and backstrike. They have a really, really, really solid catch rate. You might not even have to use leading balls. Like right here, I just used great balls and it worked out fine. They're, they do exist during the day, though. Tell me I'm wrong. The fuck is this song? There's songs I haven't heard in a long time in this game. Oh, this is the Growlithe Awakening song. Okay. I think that one saw me. Yeah, I need to scare five. For Voltorb, you either need to scare five or uh, catch one. Or scare five, catch one, or scare three, catch three. And I did scare five, so I just need to leave. I figured I might as well throw a ball at it, though, just in case. I don't know. More money. Okay, so Melly, you want to be leading again, Mega? Uh, you want to be leading a faster again, Mega? <laughs> So that's really unfortunate. I don't get to finish Yen Mega now. Oh well. Um, but yeah, you're gonna ancient power the cronies first, the Zubat and the uh, Scroopy. No, it has to be Scare Five Catch One, I think. Unless that has some modifier I don't know about. Uh, you can no, you can't. The scare four isn't a task. It's one, two, three, five. Let's see, Emma's not going down, dude. And then from here, um. What are you doing? Okay. Then from here, um, Gastro Earth Power should be enough. Yeah, because it's a range at full health, I think, but, you know, where we are, it's uh, pretty good. Yeah, Voltorb's one, two, three, five, seven. So cutscenes, cutscenes, cutscenes. Voltorb. Uh, Voltorb, first of all, you want to lob some uh, up throws up, but fully charge them. Um, because from this distance, you can only hit Voltorb if you like at least half charge the bombs. And then from this point forward, you want to just kind of circle Volt or not Voltorb, uh, Electrode. Sorry, he's an upside down Voltorb. Um, 
you want to kind of circle him and uh, throw bombs at him, and you want to listen to where the Voltorbs are. I know this is very hard in a video with no game audio, but um, yeah, listen closely to where the Voltorbs are falling. If they fall near you or on top of you, you might have to dodge out of the way. Like like that, I had to dodge out of the way, otherwise I was gonna hit by the, get hit by the dis by the get hit by the explosion. God damn it, I cannot fucking talk. Um. Yeah, you're gonna hit by, hit by the explosion, and getting hit by the explosion is faster or is slower than actually dodging out of the way. So, yeah, throw, throw, and uh, you know you kind of just have to weave your way around the Voltorbs while you're throwing. It's a lot of multitasking, but the more you do it, the more you get used to it. Like your finger just gets on a rhythm of throw, 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 while your left thumb is just Monka steering out of the way of everything. And all right, that's it. Um, I didn't really get to that phase of the fight, but if he does that little jump up and land on you thing and then starts charging what we call the tactical nuke, if you just throw bombs upward, like just look up and throw them, he's like right above you. So you, sh you can hit him like that. All right, and that is Coordinate Highlands. You should warp back to camp, evolve anything you still need to evolve or whatever. And then you want to put something, some weak poison type Something weak to Psychic in your party as the only Pokemon. Uh, for this route, I vote for Toxicroak because it's quad weak and it's in the 40s. Uh, Alright, we're going to talk to the Professor. And uh, the big reveal on my points. <laughs> Just going through everything I've done. 9900 points so it should be very clear to you while you're doing this run while you're following this route hey this thing didn't get in the ball i don't have to stay and waste my time and get frustrated at this i can just move on there was approximately i guess uh seven things i could have just moved on from and been fine seven entire pokemon's worth of research i could have just fuck it and just left and been perfectly okay so yeah just keep that in mind um when you're doing this run that you know not everything has to go perfectly smoothly it's okay to just skip things and pick up other things and stuff like that and i didn't even get vulpix in this run and uh yeah it was a pretty average run i could have had more points so yeah that's the end of this episode uh if you got any value out of this be sure to leave a like and uh, you know subscribe to the channel uh if you have any questions about this area in particular leave a comment i'm going to try to read all read and respond to all comments about this uh tutorial and i'll see you guys next time Bye bye